What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23 coming to you today with some Raid Shadow Legends and we're going to be jumping right in here going up against the Doom Tower Floor 10, Bommel the Dreadhorn, the boss that is giving everybody nightmares right now and I'm going to do my best to show you in this video that this boss on Floor 10 of Normal is really, I don't think as difficult as a lot of people are making it out to be uh, we're going to be running through this with some very free-to-play friendly champions. We're going to be using rare champions. We're going to be using our login champions. We're going to be using some champions that are weak affinity here. We have our starter, Kale, in here, uh, who's built for arena. He's a glass cannon. He hardly has any defense or HP. We're going to be using Mother Superior. We're going to be using Silver Drakes. We've got War Maiden running in here as well. And you're going to see a variety of different champions that we are running through here. Um, I'm going to show you the gear and the stats and everything toward the end of the video. You're going to see some of these champions don't even have fully built gear. They don't have gear at all in some cases. Uh, they don't have masteries in some cases. And what you're going to see through this video is kind of a recurring theme. You're going to see certain champions that make this a lot easier to get through. You're going to see certain champions that survive even through uh, these bombs. And regardless of what happens, we're able to clear this boss without too much trouble. Uh, the two things you're really going to want to focus on for this guy, defense and HP. Uh, now the point of this video is not to go on and beat the hard Doom Tower. It's not to go up through the main Doom Tower, the normal Doom Tower. This is mainly to get you through floor 10 on the normal boss because I'm just seeing a lot of complaints. People are saying this is impossible, uh, that this boss is too hard, it needs to be nerfed. And I think a lot of those complaints, unfortunately, their account may not be at a point where... Um, they should be attempting Doom Tower. I think one of the problems Plarium did with the advanced quests is they actually made them available too early. So now people are trying to go in and get their silver keys done and now they can't get past this guy because past rotations of the Doom Tower may have had an easier boss like the Magma Dragon, which is pretty much a joke uh, at floor 10. So it was much easier for people to get through. But the point of this video is just to kind of help you out. So if you're one of those players, you can go through it and you can get your five silver keys done every day, get your advanced quest finished and move on. Um, quite honestly, I feel like if you're struggling with any floor 10 boss on the Doom Tower, your account is probably not in an area where you should be going after um, the Doom Tower. Um, some people may not like that. They may get mad that I said that. That's fine. I understand everybody's going to have their opinion, but that's kind of the way I view it. And you're going to see that when we take a look at these champions later on, that even though my great haul on this account's not great, we're on the free-to-play account intentionally, because uh, I didn't want people to say you're on your main account where you spend money and you've got your developed great haul and you've got really some decent gear. We're on the free-to-play account where the gear is kind of average. Some of these champs are fairly well built because I've used them in Clan Boss, and I think that's what it's going to wind up hopefully showing is that as long as you can put a halfway decent build together with defense and HP on this boss, uh, and you're still able to put out a little bit of damage, uh, you really should not have too much of a problem here. And again, you're seeing we're using champions like Kyria, who's not even fully leveled up. Uh, Marquez, who's a spirit champion. Probably People are probably like, why do you even have a Marquez at level 60? Uh, you're going to see that in a later video uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. It's, it's for a new arena thing I'm working on. Uh, that I'm going to show off on the free to play and also the main account. Uh, you're going to see Grush. He's a login champion. You get him for free. Uh, I think a lot of people sleep on him. Uh, you do get him a little bit later in the login calendar, but if you're at the point where you have Silver the Drakes, you get him pretty close afterwards. They're both uh, defensive champions. Both really, really good champions to build out for your account regardless. Uh, you can see here for this run, we're going to throw in Hykatoon. Uh, she's not even built. She has no mastery. She has no books. She's not even level 50 yet. Uh, we put Ninja in here. He's level 50. I don't think my Ninja even has gear on this account. I think I was possibly going to build him for Clan Boss. But we just kind of brought him in here because he's a free-to-play legendary you'll get if you play the game in the last two months. Uh, if for some reason you haven't been playing Raid, jump in here before October so you can log in seven days in a row and get Ninja. Uh, free legendary, and he's pretty decent. You're going to see War Maiden in a lot of these teams. Uh, pretty staple champion. She is a easily farmable champion from the campaign you can farm up all of her books she's in an arena build so her you'll see later on her stats her her hp and everything else is not great she's kind of a glass cannon here too just in there for the decreased defense basically to get us through the waves uh, what you're going to find out in a lot of these teams you're going to see that grush is usually the one still standing and marquez is here in this case as well they are both defensive champions uh, their defense, I believe, is over 3,000 in both cases, and that's why I kind of mentioned that little threshold of you know 3K defense and 40K HP if you can reach that. 
that's going to really help you easily beat this guy. I don't think you're going to have too much trouble if you can get your gear uh, up to that state. And you can see there in just about every video here, Grush is the one that's really holding it together. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Get that those really good, strong defensive champions, uh, many of which you can get very easily. Uh, even champions like Shield Guard uh, is one you can farm up from the campaign, the same stage that you farm War Maiden. And here's kind of the cool thing. We're going to go in here again, Floor 10 Normal, free to play account, just Sil of the Drakes, who's negative affinity, and Grush, the two of them. Login champions that everybody should have, uh, unless you're just starting the game. And quite honestly, if you haven't got to the point where you got Sil of the Drakes yet, I don't know if you should be in Doom Tower. Um, you know, it, it takes a while to get your account to the point where you should be running Doom Tower. I know there's a lot of people out there who uh, blow through the game, expert free to play, expert whatever, and get through the game in like two or three months, and they've got amazing champions. But I think for the most part, you should be at a good point into your account before you start attempting this content. But I just wanted to run these two in here, not to show off or anything. It's just to show you that you can take two login champions that are defensive champions, pretty halfway decently built. Now, in Syl's case, I don't think her crit rate's that good, and she's a little slow. But they're both at 3,000 defense. They're both at right around 40k HP. They're able to survive pretty easily. And you can see here, the two of them together are able to beat this boss uh, rather easily. So two login champions, two free-to-play champions. Uh, they do this, and there you go. So just wanted to show you a couple runs through there. I think you guys can probably find some champs you can build that do something similar. But now let's head into the Bastion. We're going to take a look at some of these champions, their builds, uh, the gear, the masteries, and everything. And uh, kind of give you guys a closer look at what we were using. All right, guys, we are back here in the Bastion now on the free-to-play account. First thing we're going to do is jump into the Great Hall. Just take a look at the Great Hall so you guys can kind of see uh, where we're getting our boosted stats from, from this. And again, on my free-to-play account, Great Hall is not amazing. It's not really well developed at all, except in a couple of different areas, like magic accuracy and some of uh, the stats here. We, we barely have any fives or sixes, so you can kind of get an idea here. The Great Hall is not great. It's nothing special. I intentionally did this on this account so you guys can see that you don't need a fully developed, built-out Great Hall in order to get through uh, this boss on normal 10. So let's jump in here. We'll take a look at some of the champions that we were using. Uh, you saw there, obviously, Sill of the Drakes. Um, one of the best champions in the game, honestly, in my opinion. If you have her and you haven't built her, if you're not using her, please do. Uh, she's going to help you out through so much content in this game. And you saw there, even though she's weak affinity, we still used her against the boss. And she still did just fine. Uh, obviously, on her, one of the big problems is we do have Evil Eye on her. And she does take away a little bit of turn meter on that A1. So that is definitely something you really don't want on this boss, uh, especially later on in the Doom Tower. But for floor 10, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you can do enough damage on this guy, you can take him out before any of his damage really becomes a problem for you. So it's just about having the developed statistics, being able to put out some damage. Uh, you know, and honestly, I could have used some other champs that we could have beat him even faster, but I wanted to try to stay as free to play friendly as possible because I want to show people that this boss really is not super difficult. Uh, you shouldn't really be having too much trouble getting through floor 10 of the Doom Tower on any rotation as long as your account is in an area where it should be doing Doom Tower. So you can see here the gear, only five star accessories. Um, nothing's rolled up past 12. We do have some decent relentless gear on her that we got from a tournament that actually rolled halfway decent. Top row is not even rolled up to 16. Take a look at her total stats here. Uh, she's pretty slow at 174. Crit rate's not that high. Accuracy is great because that's we want her to be able to land that stun when we're using her in other dungeons and in faction wars. Now, the main things I want to show you guys here are defense and HP. Um, most of the champions you're going to see here that we used are going to be built somewhat tanky. So we've got 3,300 defense, which is pretty decent. And we've got 4,200 HP. So those two things put together are going to help us mitigate a lot of that bomb damage um, that bomb was going to be thrown at us. That's going to help us survive. You saw there in that run that Sill and Grush basically did it by themselves. And Grush pretty much in every run was almost carrying it a little bit. And you'll see when we look at him too, he's kind of built very similar. Uh, these are both defensive champs. They're a little bit easier to build uh, in a tanky fashion. So let's just go ahead and drop down here to Grush. Uh, we'll take a look at his masteries real quick. He's built more for Clan Boss. Uh, we were using him for his Leech in Clan Boss. And he does have some of my better accuracy and perception gear on him. Uh, again, you can kind of see none of his accessories rolled to 12 uh, or beyond 12. We even have a four-star banner here. Let's take a look at his total stats. And again, we're going to look at the HP. It's almost at 40K. It's actually kind of low. I'd like to have this a little bit higher. Uh, defense, again, right around 3,300, 3,200. 
He's a defensive champ, so he's going to benefit from that. A little bit better crit rate than Sill, and you can see his accuracy is way up there at 318. Kind of went a little overboard with that, uh, mainly for Clan Boss and some other areas. But again, it's just n none of the gear here is all that amazing. You know, we're even using some rare pieces. We've got some flat roll. We've got two flat rolls on this piece here. Uh, just some basic speed boots here with, again, two flat rolls. So it's just about kind of building the champion tanky enough, but also being able to do enough damage. And one of the reasons we use a lot of these champions, too, is because most of these are free to play. We got War Maiden in there, who obviously you can farm up from the campaign. And look at how my War, my war Maiden is not built the best. She's got a four star helmet. She's got a five star common chest piece here. Uh, with flat HP on it and only five speed. Uh, we do have a pair of speed boots, which got some pretty decent rolls on there. And then just some regular crit rate gloves here. She's mainly built fast for my arena team. I didn't change anything about her build. Uh, you can look at her masteries here as well. But she's mainly built for my arena team and to be a decreased defense champion. And the dungeons, when I run those, you see four star banner. Um, we've got this ring only level to 12. Not all of her gears rolled up. Uh, looking at her main stats here, you see she is pretty fast. 217, that's mainly because we do use her in arena. She's got 232 accuracy to make sure she lands that decrease. Defense, 80% uh, crit rate, mainly to hit a little bit harder in the arena. And, but you look at her stats though, 28,000 health and 1,100 defense. And she still did okay there. Yeah, she's probably going to die more often than not, but as she's getting that decreased defense out uh, for those waves, helping us get through that. It's mainly about getting to the boss and getting your hardest hitting champions to the boss on floor 10. Uh, just so you can hit that guy pretty hard and beat him pretty quick. Again, we're only talking about floor 10 here. This is not anything beyond this. Floor 10 of normal. I know everybody is struggling with this. They're trying to just get to the point where they can use their um, ten, their five silver keys every day to get their advanced quest seat, uh, done. Because that's the biggest complaint I'm seeing from most of the community is uh, it, it seems to be mostly players who probably shouldn't be doing doom tower just yet but they have that advanced quest and unfortunately plarium did set it up so that advanced quest unlocks a little too early it kind of encourages you to go into the doom tower when you're probably not at a point with your account you should be doing that but this way you guys can kind of see here we're using rare champions we're using free to play champions campaign farmable champions we even had our starter champion in kale going in there uh, and again he's built for arena and he's again negative affinity but this will at least hopefully help you see how you can still get through this level 10 boss and still get your silver keys finished. Um, even if you may not think you have the champions that you can do it, you can certainly do it. Uh, you can see his gear again, kind of a mishmash, broken sets, not really rolled up, got one speed set on him. We do have, I think this is a blood shield ring. That's a reaction ring, okay, that's for arena mainly. He's on my arena defense, but not that that's gonna be super helpful there. Uh, and you can see his build too. It's like 1800 defense and 3100 HP. He's got enough HP there to kind of help him out. He's not very fast. He goes last of my arena team, 179. He's got no accuracy whatsoever, but he's got 86 crit rate and 231% crit damage. So even though he's weak affinity there, you want him hitting that boss kind of hard. And that's kind of the thing on this boss, like I said. Like on my main account, I nuked this boss in four turns with, um, I think with Septimus and Ithos. And any, basically if you have any nuker built well on your account, you should be able to go into this boss and beat it uh, somewhat easily. So, uh, yeah, let me show you, uh, jump here, look at Kale's Masteries real quick. You see there again, nothing, nothing too crazy. Uh, we use Mother Superior here, uh, you know, and again, she was built, used to be built for my clan boss team. So you can see she's just in basic life steel gear. She's got one set of accuracy gear on her. Uh, that I think we swapped out with Grush maybe to get him some better stats. Because if you look at her stats overall, they're not amazing. 147 accuracy is not going to land on anything. The crit rate's terrible. Uh, defense is not great. Speed is not great. HP is 35,000, which is not too bad, but she gave us that speed aura, helped us get through uh, the boss there a little bit more quickly. But again, she's just a rare champion. Nothing special, no crazy legendaries, uh, other than Syl, obviously, but she's a legendary that everyone can get. We've got Marquez here. I'm actually building her as part of something different that I'm not quite ready to talk about yet, but I'm gonna kind of show you guys that later on. Uh, hardly any masteries done, I don't think. We do have her fully booked. Okay, that's the one thing. She does have books. Um, and I think the rest of these champions are pretty much... All, we'll look at that in just a second here. But you can see here, she doesn't have um, her amulet here in the middle. Banner's only rolled to eight. Gear's kind of mishmash again. Uh, we're building her mainly as a defense style uh, nuke champion. And that's the other thing too. She's defensive based champion. So you can see there, we've got her defense again, almost at, almost at 3,000 and almost to 40K health. 
that's the other thing too. You kind of saw she was one of the people that when we did get people killed in this, she was still standing up with Grush and with still the Drakes because they're all built uh, close to that 40,000, 3,000 defense so that they have that survivability that's in there. Now her crit rate and crit damage are not anything special. Uh, none of her stats really. Her speed's okay at 185. Uh, but again, not a special build, not a special champion. I'm trying to see if we use anybody else here. We did throw um, Hyria in there. And here's, this is kind of funny. Look, she doesn't even have her boots. She's missing her boots. She has no boots. She has no banner. She has no um, necklace. I don't believe we have any books on her. And we have no masteries. And we threw her in there just for the heck of it. Just to kind of, just to, again, just to kind of show you that you don't really need the greatest of champions to get through this content. And looking at her, her stats, they're just terrible. She's not even built. 133 speed, no speed boots. <laughs> so <laughs> that can kind of give you guys an idea there of what you know what we're working with here, just to kind of kind of show you. Now, the first team that I did use to beat this, I didn't want to use it because I know Renegade is somewhat difficult to pull because she's a void rare. But I mainly just used her as a lead because she does have this resistance aura if you want to try to resist some of the bombs. And then she's just at a shield set. The easiest way to get through this boss, as I've been saying over and over again in this video, is to basically stack defensive mitigation. Uh, HP, defense, if you can throw a shield set on top of it. Uh, just whatever you could do to layer yourself with defense and HP uh, and to basically get through this boss. Because as you saw there, we used a lot of champions that are really nothing crazy, nothing special. We use a lot of rare champions. We use our two login champions and we even just duoed it with Syl and Grush. So if you've got Grush as login champion, if you haven't built him, he's definitely worth it. Uh, him and Syl can duo this boss on floor 10 normal. They get through it pretty quickly. And uh, again, this is just to kind of show you like, it, you don't need all the crazy legendaries. You don't need a well-built great hall. You don't need the most insane gear. You can get through this boss and you can get to the point where you're just able to complete uh, your advanced quests and get your five silver keys in every single day just by working with what you have uh, you know you saw here again this is pretty free to play friendly in my opinion uh, obviously it's on my free to play account so your, your account may be different you may not have pulled the same champions but i'm sure you've got some champions in your roster that you can use to get through this it, just build them the right the right way i think that's one of the things a lot of people are missing out on this new content came out the boss is hard he's very hard um, on my main account, I'm struggling just to get him uh, get through it on the hard hard tower. I actually did have to go with the uh, solo uh, burn Geary thing that everybody's using. I had to go ahead and build one of those guys uh, to get through it. So that's one strategy there. But hard tower is a completely different animal than normal. Um, if you're barely getting into normal tower, you don't even need to be worried about hard tower. You don't even need to be thinking about it. Uh, but again, this boss, if you're having trouble with him on the first floor 10, first boss on normal doom tower, the problem is not the boss. It's that you need to go in, take a look at your champions, see how they're built, get to that threshold, the 3,000 defense, the 40,000 HP. Um, you know, throw some defensive champions in there. Try your best not to have anybody that reduces turn meter because that's going to throw off, um, you know, the, the fight a little bit and make him put those bombs on you. That's actually my biggest gripe, I think, with this boss, especially on the hard tower, is that you have to go in and basically remaster all your champions. Uh, that you're using to make sure they don't have UI. So that's very annoying, but again, that's a very niche case. That's going to come into play later on up the normal tower um, and in the hard tower. But again, the point of this video is just to go ahead and show you how to get through the floor 10 boss, and it's really not that difficult. So uh, I hope you guys found this helpful. As always, if you have any questions about anything that was in the video, feel free to leave it down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks as always for watching. And I will see you again next time.